So supply chain issues haven't really improved much in the last few years. And my normal supplier, all right, on the phylon material, was out of material for at least another month, month and a half. Who knows at that, at that time. Material is 110 inches wide, which is why I like to use it. Because if you guys follow my videos, after we trim the phylon to fit and tuck it in the radiuses, we're cutting usually about an inch, inch and a half off each side, which means it's about 107 inches we need. That's an important number because the only other supplier I could find, I have used them before, is Hemet Valley. Hemet Valley RV and Siding, and they do sell it, but it's 108 inches. Now this is a pretty time sensitive job that I'm doing, and because uh, Allwright didn't have it, and I had to procure it from Hemet Valley. Now Hemet Valley is not incredibly close to Phoenix. In fact, it's about a day's trip there and back again. And I know that because I drove there to pick up the material. So I didn't have to wait for it to be freight shipped to me and then find out it was either damaged or it wasn't going to work. So I did make the drive all the way out there. Alright, it's the first time I've been here in person. Welcome to Hemet Valley RV. That's where the magic happens here. Time to get it back to Arizona. And Chad has it now. I really hope this was worth it. So it was a fun drive out there. The whole crew at Hemet Valley was very nice. They worked with me very easily. And everything was ready. To find it, I, I don't have weeks and weeks and weeks to wait on this. I needed it done, and that's why I went to do it. Hopefully it was all worth doing. All right, so you got it on there? Yeah. It's 108 inches, right? Woo, we got about 107. Gives me 108 is way down there. So it's long enough. It's just going to be close. So we're finding the center marks right there. This will work. That's not a lot of margin of error. Even less than normal. So it's very important we get a center line down the middle of this and lay out this roof and make sure that it was going to fit. I keep saying the worst thing that can happen is that means I would just have to raise the side molding up at least a half an inch that'll give me another inch on total worst case scenario and this is not full pot body paint and so that won't be too disastrous but i'd still prefer not to do all that extra work wait first things first chad no don't take off that i need yeah, to stay right there we'll we need to measure make sure it is 108 inches <laughs> you went to california and didn't measure this i didn't have a tape measure with me you drove to california without a tape measure i call bull I left at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, it is 108 and 30 seconds. 108 and what? 130 seconds. It's right there. Okay, so I was hoping that maybe they were calling it 108 when it's 110, but no. Nope. But the nice thing about this stuff is it does have the plastic wrap on it. I have used Tim at Valley before on a few of my videos. It's just nicer with that 110 inches. Next thing we have to do is measure a mark right down the middle of the tube right there, all the way down. As we lay it out, that way I know that uh, the material doesn't move when we actually glue it down. So measure 45 inches. 54 inches. Whoa! 54. 54, 54, 54. inches. I feel like you're making things that up. That one. 54. Here you go. No. 55? 54. 54 times 2 is 108. As far as we know. Alright. That's the middle. Us in the... You know, we're supposed to put it right there so we can wrap it around to the top edge too. But that's fine, that's fine. We'll, we'll get there. I did neglect to mention at this point, I think I do have to say it, Hemet Valley is not a sponsor, but it is a good place to pick up siding, metal siding, especially for vintage trailers. I've picked it up from them before too. They kind of specialize in that. They also do the skirting on most travel trailers and fifth wheels. So you need that done. Otherwise, it's kind of called a J wrap, right, Chad? Yeah. They make doors, and on top of that, they'll laminate walls for front and rear caps on travel trailers that uses a plastic substrate instead of that cardboard that has uh, lots of problems. PRP? TRP? PP? P. P we did this before, and we didn't know. PRP. PRP. Making that up. I'm making it up. All right, so, we're on our center line right up there. 
secured down. If it was windier, I'd be putting some more screws in, but we're not to that point yet anyways. Found the middle of the, on the underside. So hopefully it should line up as we start rolling on it. If we have to make adjustments, this is where we're gonna make them. So the file on and the glue is a pretty substantial monetary investment and only gonna get one chance to put it down. So I think being careful with the layout is the most important thing I can recommend. And if I come over here, we're definitely long enough over there. If I come up over here, we're definitely long enough over there. So that's the good news. The bad news is we got a long ways to go on the layout. Yeah, we got four feet down. All right, so now we just have to roll it back up, keeping the edges uh, even with each other. And we'll be ready to glue this down. All right, we almost got this thing rolled back up. Let's see. As we blindly roll it up, just look for our line. Woohoo! Wow! He's still there? That was almost like somebody planned that. You using computers and lasers for this? Blue chalky lasers, yes. Chalk lines and sharpies. What else do you need? And a tape measure, obviously. Oh, a tape measure. Okay, so now we switch to Stabon 440. Red. Even though this stuff is uh, more orange than red, I feel like the 183 is red. But maybe I'm just colorblind. They both say red on, on the... I know. Uh, so it works the same way. Spray the uh, Luon, spray the Phylon, sandwich it together, and it's laminated. And then we do that the length of the RV. All right, let's do this, Chad. Do it to it. This glue we get from All Right also, but they did not have the file on for us. Okay, so now we just... Down. Gotta let it flash a little bit. There's still too much solvent. It's not hot like it normally is when we're doing this. Yeah, we always get these roofs when it's like 130 degrees outside. Winter? Nah, no one wants to do the roof in the winter. <laughs> Gotta use it in the winter. You ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Tell me when to stop. Stop. All right, that was easy. All right, so the good news is we have got it started. I don't know, I got about four feet down. You look at my line, I don't know if you see that line. There we go, get you in the middle there. We're lined up right on the line, at the middle of the roof. So we're looking good. Chad's just filling up the glue over there. Large and in charge. All right, you wanna hold this for a second? Roll it out. You ready? Yep. I got gloves on, don't worry. We're good. I mean, you don't completely have to hang it. Up, so. okay, I think we're huh? just about perfect. And don't worry, there is actually a protective film on this stuff from Hemet Valley. So all this glue and everything on the roof comes back pristine afterwards. The last thing to do is I'll just cut it to length on the back. Wouldn't you know it, it's even gonna be long enough on the sides. And I guess, I have to cut off about half an inch. <laughs> Good morning guys. We got the uh, new phylum material put on last night. Because even though we have the new Luon down, the new deck down to the foam and the phylon on top of it, and so it is a new roof, we have to secure it now. And on Winnebago, this edge does not get screwed down. It gets tucked into this channel right here. So the next step is I have to cut this material short enough to fit in the bottom of here and not be too long where it's trying to push back up and it's not too short so it's not uh, inside enough and wants to pop out. It's the most stressful part because you'd think that everything would be perfectly straight and plumb and level using lasers at Winnebago's factory, but the wall has waviness to it. The roof has a waviness to it. 
And so it does affect the geometry of this radius all the way down. And that's all thanks to Winnebago's unique seamless construction on their roof. So really all I have to do next is plan out where I'm gonna cut it, cut it short, and then tuck it down in. Now it's not always best to plan for failure, but whenever I say raise up this rail, so you would just take out all these screws all the way right there. This is a separate extrusion, this gutter, and you can theoretically raise this up uh, almost an inch to narrow this, this gap towards the roof if we need to. Very rarely do I have to do that. The bad part is when you raise this on a full body painted coach, you'll expose the white file on underneath this molding. But there's a white sidewall, so that's not too big of an issue, but I hopefully won't have to do that. All right, so this is about cutting a half inch off. Have my test line right there. Before I go too much further, this is where I gotta tuck it in. Ah, too late all right. Now. Oh, so you can see my line I made right there. We did do a preliminary talk just to see how good my line is. And I feel like I might be the best person ever compared to Chad. That's a lie, Chad's better than me. But I feel pretty good about this. What do you think, Chad? Actually, that's Almost perfect? Would you say it's perfect? Just say the words, I wanna hear it. Dancing just above the molding, so that's perfect. Ah, I got it! Highest praise there is. I think we can get this cut and tucked today. You don't know me. Huh? Apparently you know me really well. I do know you really well. Alright, just make it Yes, so like the good time of year to be there. It was cold. We don't always do it by hand, but this roof was exceptionally wavy. I do like to leave a little bit of a miter bite here too. Put the cap on. Makes it a little bit easier to put the cap on. But that's it. Now it's just time to tuck it. But before we tuck it, because I don't want to get the plastic film stuck against the rail, even though it probably would come out okay, but I don't want to risk it, we'll pick, peel back the plastic wrap a little bit. Right, Chad? Yes. So sad. Oh, I ruined it. We got that radius installed on this side. It looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a puckers right there, but that's because the roof has this weird cave right or hump right there. Uh, normally that'll massage itself out in the sun or you can use a heat gun to kind of relax it a little bit. Fiberglass isn't completely uh, rigid. It can be formed a little bit. Flexible. Actually, Phylon's quite quite interesting. It has a memory to it too. Yeah, it's like pecs. Right. It definitely goes right back. Right. Uh, so now you have to move this over and we'll do the other side. Pretty much the exact same thing. All right, Chad, that's the second one done. That's the scariest part. Now I'm happy because I don't have to do any more hard parts. So now with both sides tucked, not completely at the bottom, it's free floating. The last thing we'll probably do on this is put, put our bead of Proflex down there, clear Proflex. That's what's gonna actually glue the actual roof to the sidewall. And then I say that for the last, and I'm gonna cut out a lot of holes in this deck, make a lot of sawdust, and I don't need that in fresh sealant. So the next thing we have to do is take off our very, very special plastic. Ready. Ooh. Chad, it's so good to work with you again. I know, I miss working James. Everybody misses Chad. We got that radius tucked. That radius is tucked. This roof looks just beautiful because there's no plastic on it. There's no dirt on it like it normally is because sometimes you get a little bit of overspray. I don't blame Chad on camera, it's just off camera. But this is looking good. Now, I'm just gonna prep the front cap here a little bit by getting rid of a uh, this a stick of flex down to the fiberglass where it didn't even stick from Winnebago. So 
Some good uh, molding they did over there at Winnebago. At any rate, normally I use a Sikaflex brand adhesive to glue the front and rear caps down, but I've had pretty good results with this uh, Loctite Marine uh, Fast Cure. It's not quite Fast Cure. Big box store stock this. Uh, I'll put the link in the description on it. And soapy water usually works pretty well too. So big surprise, there was a still a hole in the sidewall there from the previous body work. But we're just going to got to ease that corner a little bit. A lot of times the cap's not formed for a square and it causes issues. At any rate, I'm gonna fill in behind right there. Underneath here. Definitely on the side here, right? There. This is the adhesive that's actually going to be holding the side of the cap down, even though the screws are there. Don't think they're going to do much. We'll do the other side the same way, and then the last thing I'll do is put a bead across the front, and then do a bead across the roof as I have the cap on. All right, so bead there, bead there. I'll probably put a second bead afterwards. I need the other end, right? Yes. You okay. Definitely a lot better than a Ready? full front cap, right? Ooh, wow, he's out. Yes. See, so that's oozing out everywhere. All right, so pull it towards me. Tiny bit, yeah, and down, All right, hold right there. Okay. That's nice to have a second person. Woo, nice. Something like that. Yet. Using the short ones, right? What, the long ones? <laughs> All right, when Chad does that, I'll get the uh, rear cap prepped and we'll have the other one in, hopefully, by the time we come back. So. Nice. Put some screws in it now. And then don't forget, before we laminated the loo on up here, we put the metal sheet metal in that sheet metal in. So that's what these are grabbing onto. So rear caps on. Front cap's on, next step is to go inside, cut all the holes through the ceiling. That's pretty straightforward, just drill a hole in the corners and connect the dots. Just have to remove my covers now. And from underneath, I can use my hole saw right there at the corner. All purpose saw here, reciprocating saw, will connect the dots. Hey, and then just do that, I don't know, four or five more times. Now, like all these roof jobs, I save some of this paneling from the roofs to use as a template for the holes and with the uh, sewer vents and radio antenna should be. It's a very good guidelines to have. Remember, I line it up on the foam. The foam hasn't changed. Draw this out here, but of course, the skylight that was on there was broken. Now, Let's have a talk. These Winnebago skylights have kind of gotten completely out of control with the price of them. And it's not like they're worth the money that Winnebago is charging for them. They're just proprietary. So I was able to secure a similar size skylight for a different flange hole because I haven't cut the hole yet. Once I get the skylight in, which it's on order, uh, then I'll cut this out completely. Uh, the inner lens, is uh, completely encapsulating, so that hole won't be seen. Uh, it'll just be the hole on the roof that will maybe be a different size. But I, I just cannot justify $600 for a skylight lens. All right, so with that all marked out. I did touch on it before. Because we spent so much money on new vents, bodywork on the front cap, we're gonna reuse the old crank up TV antenna. Gotta make decisions sometimes. This'll work just fine.
And hopefully right there should be a vent stack for a sewer vent. Brilliant. We'll just use the inch and a half uh, couplers or ABS unions for that because it's just going to be for air ventilation. With a coupler, I can just put the old piece that I cut off right back on again. Luckily, these lined up perfectly with the refrigerator vent, too. Okay, cool. There's the new vents we got. Not my favorite ones, but I do like because they have the built-in tabs on it for a vent cover if we need it. Chad's just going to do what I normally do. Put the vent on there, mark on the vent or the roof where the flange is. Now Winnebago, because we saw how thin the deck is, it's only eighth inch thick. I don't like using putty tape on Winnebago. Right, Chad? Uh, it doesn't work. Putty tape works on compression and an eighth inch uh, paneling will not... I will not compress putty tape. So we're going to be using 100% silicone sealant. But I think it actually uses quite a bit, especially on their TV antennas and uh, a number of their other vents. Uh, that'll act as an adhesive and a sealant. And this actually works so much better than butyl tape on these fiberglass roofs that there's no reason to do butyl tape. As far as the screws go, we're just going to be using these uh, last, they're like a washer headed screws. Uh, these really just exist as a clamp to hold the vent flange down until this sealant uh, cures. Once that cures, then we'll go over the entire roof with uh, the uh, self-leveling lap sealant. And then now, I wouldn't say I talked the owner into upgrading the vents while we are at it, but it didn't make any sense not to. If you're going to be putting new vents on, why save $60 when you can have a nice vent? Uh, I wanted the ones with the built-in vent or uh, rain cover, but those were not available. So I got the next best thing. These are the Max fans. Yeah, Max fans. So they have these tabs right there to accept a purpose-built vent cover. They just hold in with clips. So that'll be a good upgrade if they want to do that. Make sure you put the hinge at the front. Don't want to open it up the other way. <laughs> right, Chad's going to help me out here. So the ceiling surface is down. Yeah, right at the edge there. So this is the primary seal. This is what's supposed to keep water out. The sealant on top only exists to direct water away from the flange, not as the sealant. Right, Chad? Yeah. So if, you're, if your component's leaking, the lap seal is not what you're supposed to be fixing. Okay, line that up. Quit. Now because we'll be using self-leveling silicone, I don't have to worry about that, not interacting because silicone will stick to silicone. But don't worry, I will be changing out the stupid coax cable that's no good. I got another one here to put on. Alright, so just like that rear cap, remember there's some metal we put right there. Nice, so we did hit that. And maybe I didn't point it out on these, these are actually self-tapping lath screws. Still about an inch and a quarter. Okay, ladder's installed. Pretty much the last thing I have to do is put the radio antenna in, put the AC on, then what I will probably do is seal up a little bit, just in case over the weekend it decides to rain. All right, thank you, Micah. This antenna mask can be changed out later if they want a new one. Vegas used the same radio antenna mask for at least 20 years, and they've all had the same problem for 20 years, but I would say if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but it's broke and they don't fix it. So if you have a forklift, definitely is a lot better. And if you have a mica, it's even better. Take okay. your shoes off every time? Or? No. All right. No, 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 we're not animals. It's a little bit easier than dragging it up a ladder on my back. And because this is a Winnebago roof, so we're going with the self-leveling silicone sealant. It is a lap sealant. Like I keep saying, the seal underneath the flange is a primary seal. This is just a liquid flashing going on top to redirect water. And because we use silicone as the gasket, as a seal, we need to use a self-leveling silicone on top because nothing will stick to this other than silicone. If you put Dicor here, it'll look pretty, but you can pull it straight back off again once it's cured. If you have the means that have a battery powered 
caulking gun like this, I would recommend doing that. It's a little bit easier. And then we'll be done with that. I uh, still have a number of components to do in these and definitely I'm going to do the front and rear caps because even though Winnebago traditionally doesn't do it, even though the owner of this Spirit is asking me to save as much money as possible, it's very vital to me not to put components on here that are going to intentionally damage the roof that I just installed. So that's why I do want a new AC gasket. That's why I do like to upgrade all the vents and all the other attachments because there's no reason to save a couple hundred dollars on this pretty expensive roof now. Adding a little bit of extra sealant is going to give me a little bit more peace of mind. I'll take that too. Oh, okay guys, I got good news. So when we last left off, I sealed off all the components that were already installed because it was supposed to rain over the weekend. And it didn't go too bad. Uh, the sealant's pretty much set up. It's a little bit squishy up front. I did leave this area untouched because I still do want to uh, uh, seal this off and then overlap the roof sealant with it. But more importantly, I just got a skylight from Specialty Recreation, which hopefully is the right one I need. Okay, and while I can't make the inside hole any smaller, I can make the outside hole as big as I want it to be. And it looks to me, like that fits perfectly. So let me try to center this up, draw a line where I want it to be, and then I can cut the inside hole out. So the Winnebago OEM skylight is priced at about $600 now. $600 not including shipping. Special Recreation, their 16 by 26 skylight, which I just measured out right there, is about 30 by 20 flange size, even at $120, $140, it's probably overpriced for a piece of plastic again. Nothing complicated about it. But that's, that's a fifth of the price of Winnebago Skylight that's going to break. Just trying to order anything from Winnebago. It takes a few days of getting hold of people, getting it shipped. Their shipping prices are pretty ridiculous just cannot justify the expense of $700 for one skylight lens. When this one is gonna work just fine. And would be my guess, won't break like Winnebago's will. And I think even more importantly, it fits just fine. So even if I cut out the original hole, that flange is gonna work just fine. So. That's, uh, that's the way we're going to do it from now on until Winnebago decides to stop uh, charging way too much for silly skylights that tend to break. Clean this up a little bit. And then of course the skylight comes with a skylight sealant which I use as a flange seal. Now this is butyl based. And I don't know if you guys remember when I was taking it apart, Winnebago does use butyl underneath their sewer vents, underneath their 14 by 14 vents. So the Winnebago self-leveling silicone uh, or Nuflex 311 will seal to this just fine. Now luckily I had enough sealant left over to do a second bead on that flange. I don't know if you guys can see, it's like spider webs. It's very stringy, so be a little bit delicate with it. The next step is just going to be to put the lens on, smear it about like so. And use those washer-headed uh, glass screws that we've been using on the entire roof here. All right. Now we do want to see that stuff kind of ooze out all the way around. If you can see it oozing out from underneath the flange there that's all good I won't scrape that loose because there's no reason to the sealant will stick to it but here's that sealant one more time I call it SR 140 and of course we're still just using self-leveling silicone Nuflex 311 whatever you want to call it 
Same with the uh, screw heads. We want to redirect water away from the screw heads. All right, so now the last thing I need to do is put a new gasket seal on the AC. I'm just going with the generic Camco one. Yeah. I'll go part number for you. Oh, there you go, part number. 25071. It's really just uh, self-adhesive uh, sticky tape. But yeah, you can see this thing's been smashed and torn. We don't need to try to save this at all. Need to do the rear spacer too. This supports the back of the AC so it doesn't bounce and put all the pressure on the clamp seal itself. Just clean it off a little bit and put this one on. This one's not too vital about placement. Okay. And just use the old area to kind of get his guidelines. I can just go ahead and put this back up in there. A few days ago, we took these off. So we got AC centered in the hole now. Put the trim ring on. We'll start clamping it up. All right, we compressed that about halfway. I felt pretty good about that. Every bolt's tight. Now the AC is mounted. I can't move it around by hand. See that back foam we put on is supporting the back of the AC. And the gasket itself is in good contact. So with the AC mounted, about the last thing to do is just put the uh, inside together. My next big process is gonna be wiring up all the vents I put in. So the bat's already wired up. We already have power here. So, hello. Uh, it's just going to be connecting power from this one into the closet over there. All right, so we got that back on. We'll turn it back on again. Two, three, four. And of course, the trim's a little bit too long. I'll have to trim it down. Got my line. I need to trim it a little bit. Okay. Looks pretty good. Well, I'm pretty pleased with the way this is turning out. We have the one last important step. That's to seal the radius right here. This is the most important part of this roof job because this is what keeps the roof from popping up and getting ripped off again, which is what happened there. Whenever I say to inspect an RV roof, it's not just gonna be the top of a roof on a Winnebago. It's important is gonna be this seam right here. I don't know if you can see, I can push the uh, fiberglass or the phylon away. We wanna glue this to the radius. Because again, there's no screws holding this on. It's just tucked into that channel there. And so over time, even after a year or two years, that sealant starts to give out. Tobago, it's gonna be very important to check this right here in, in conjunction with the rest of the roof when you check it once a year. Uh, I've found that this uh, ProFlex from GeoCell seems to be the best product that I've found. It stays very pliable. It's clear, so it's a lot easier to do a nice clean tooling bead on it. Uh, it will stick to wet surfaces. It'll stick to a little bit dirty surfaces. And even in the heat, it's kind of a little bit of a, a self, self healing. So I do tend to like this. If you were to go with a standard silicone, either clear or white, it will work for a little bit, but once that edge comes loose and it comes loose, it, it doesn't have any strength to it whatsoever and you can pull it right back off again. I don't find it to be very durable over time. I will definitely use 100% silicone on all the body molding, uh, like you might see here or across there. But on the roof radius, I'm gonna recommend the ProFlex. So what I like to do is try to push the nozzle right here to push the uh, file on back a little bit because I wanna try to inject it down inside of it. And so when I pull it out, it actually squeezes out. It'll flow a little bit. If you just do a cap seal on top, it will work, but I just don't find it to be as uh, durable or long lasting. We're seeing, because this is a functional joint, we'll come back and tool this later. I do like to get a little bit right there too. 
Now, I generally find just a foaming glass cleaner or scrubbing bubbles to be a pretty good way of lubricating this. If you've watched my videos, you know I usually overdo it and pull off an auto extra. And then I did stop this sealant up here short because I want to put a little bit more blob of uh, self-leveling silicone so it overlaps the sealant that I just did. Normally I save that for last, but I didn't have the opportunity this time. So there might be some concern that I'm very wasteful with this and I don't try to be incredibly wasteful, but it's very important to me that I'm pushing it down or I'm tooling it out. So yeah, uh, as you can see, I'm kind of pushing back that file on. The file has got a spring memory to it, so it's gonna to try to push back and squeeze this material back out, which will, of course, spread it on the inside and cause it to bulge up on the outside. So it's doing a really good job of spreading it deep inside the crevices there. And of course we can't screw this down because this whole edge does need to twist and flex a little bit. Otherwise the filing can get damaged. Okay, so this side is done from that all the way to the front. I'll dab on some uh, sealant on the roof up there. Way it's overlapped just a little bit. And then just do the radius on the other side. We'll finish up inside and then we'll call it good. So we got everything put back together. So we got the skylight put in, a new skylight on the outside itself. We upgraded this fan right here. We ran the power from this light right there through the ceiling while we had access to it, or through the roof, I guess. So that's a nice upgrade, that was easy to do. We went ahead and upgraded the fan that was here from a low quality fan, really nice fan, just like the other ones. Fixed the AC that was, uh, had a bad gasket on it, and even added another fan here, routing power to a circuit that Winnebago originally had for a satellite dish install. I'm not gonna remount the TV right here, but the front cap went together really nicely. And I think the inside of this is all done. And as we go on the outside of this 2003 Itasca Spirit Class C motorhome, we'll get a look on the roof. I remember when they purchased it, they did not inspect the roof. It was a 20 year old roof. And at some point, this section got ripped off likely because it became untucked from the radius here. So the first problem was that they didn't inspect the roof. Now, as I tried to explain in the first episode, with that big chunk missing, it's very difficult to put in a new section of file on without doing a lot of body work to it. And of course, the rest of the fiberglass or file on material was loose everywhere else. I think it was only attached uh, right about here around this vent and around the AC itself. So there was no saving the old file on. It's 20 years old, it's oxidized, it's deformed, and we're not gonna pull that off, clean the plywood off the back of it. So we had to go ahead and get a new roof put on. Of course, because we rip off the file on, it does take off some of the lou on. That's why we have to re-laminate the lou on using that Stay Bond 183 glue so it doesn't melt the foam. And then, we use Stay Bond 440 to glue the new file on to the Luon decking. I'm really quite pleased with the way this has turned out. We even have the sun at kind of a pretty low angle about four o'clock in the afternoon. You can see the shadows stretching. And there's not a lot of deformation that you're gonna see in the roof. It looks almost as good as the factory would have made it 20 some odd years ago. Now, in my personal opinion, I'm not trying to shame anybody out there that does roof jobs. I don't find it very advantageous to use any of the old components, the old vents uh, or sewer vents or normal power or normal 14 by 14 vents. Uh, the amount of time it takes to clean off that stuff, it costs more in labor than it does in the, uh, in the new product by itself. But it's also a good time to upgrade your vents like I did talk the customer into doing. I 
didn't want to break i didn't want to change out the skylight but we saw that it was already broken when i took it off and it was broken somewhere else that i didn't even know about winnebago wants 700 dollars for the skylight with a nice generic one and that worked out pretty well now these vents are not my favorite but due to supply chain issues i did have to use those sewer vents and even though this radio antenna is broken i did put it back in because the mast itself will just unscrew off you can put a new one on easily uh we're trying to keep this as budget friendly as we can and we spent a lot of budget on the vents and putting a new gasket on the ac but also i spent a little bit more budget on repairing the front cap that did have repair work done it on, on it before where screws or too long of screws were used and uh i just could not live with just using silicone or dabbing sealant on the holes it was going to look pretty bad and i think this front cap really makes the entire rv look a lot better being painted especially when you have a brand new roof on it so that's pretty much the uh the roof itself guys on this 2003 itasca spirit class c gas motorhome uh, if there's anything we're going to take away from this before you buy any rv whatsoever one of the first things you should be doing is getting on the roof inspecting the roof for any physical damage it happens a lot more often than you think it would i think this is the third video that we ran into somebody just buying an rv and not looking at the roof actually fourth because i did it on my terry travel trailer if anybody out there is going to be buying an rv do yourself a favor bring a ladder with you just in case they don't have a ladder and uh Take care. Of course, I got Micah right here, and I forgot to do one thing. I forgot to thank the uh, crew over here at Casones RV for letting me use their bay and a little bit of their man hours and their labor. Well, uh, Chad helped out a lot too. Micah always helps, and uh, it's really it's really nice to have uh, friends in the in the industry that'll help you out. But there it is, a brand new file on roof on this Winnebago. Hopefully, at least another ten years out of it. Maybe if they take care of it, it'll get twenty years out of it. Inspect those roof guys. I have very high confidence this work, Chad. You know how I know? Because we're on the job? Well, no, because uh, if you guys are watching this, that means it worked. Oh. See? Brilliant. I always have it. Bonito. <laughs> Inches yeah, I guess you do have to actually pay for two extra inches. Story of my life. So, uh, have a little bit more room for uh, error. Wigger. Wiggle room? Error error room. At, at any rate, um, at any rate. Yeah, this is going to mess us up, right? What is? Doing this. Why? It's 55, 55, 55, 55. Now this one's 54. That's not going to mess me up because I always I forget everything after it's done. No, some brain burned in. It's okay. I don't normally measure twice and cut once. Normally I cut three times and guess. I can't show you because he's got his whole world on display right now. Or at least the, his whole moon. Wow. Uh, Alrighty. Ready? You ready? Okay. I'm not worried about it. I'm lying. I am worried about it. Look at that. That's how they make it at the factory, right? Uh, they have lasers. I think they have more machinery than me. Maybe a couple extra guys. <laughs> A lot of force it's holding down and uh nice all right there it is a brand new roof good job chad good job james hey good morning guys i'm getting a little tired but you know the next step on this I... you're my hero chad do you know what you're doing 
Did it blow up like mine did? No, I forgot to push the thingy for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the help, Micah. A broken radio antenna mast is very common on Winnebago. It's almost like this Outlook has a broken antenna too. And the uh, gasket on the 